Hi there. This is our 100th video. <laughs> How about that? We hope that you've liked our stories, even with their lessons and reminders that helping others helps you too. We try to make them interesting and with this one, touch upon an important problem of today. You can tell us if we've succeeded. Our last five videos showed the cost of building a railroad and a canal across Panama. 40,000 people died. Add in 30,000 from the island of Martinique and you get 70,000 human bodies. And not all were buried in graves. Joseph Stalin once said, one death is a tragedy. A million is a statistic. So here's a little sad story to humanize those who died nameless and are forgotten. On March 30th, 1854, the Sea Witch, a 192 foot long clipper ship, docked at Panama City. She's still the fastest ship to ever sail across the Pacific. On that day, she was filthy. She was stinking from having carried 750 Chinese coolies jammed into every inch of her hold. By the way, the word coolie is not politically correct. Today, you'd say they were Chinese indentured servants, a step above their being actual slaves. They averaged maybe 5 foot 120 pounds. They walked silently underneath these really large cone-shaped hats. They kept their hands hidden inside the big sleeves of their light blue pajama-like suits. Surprisingly, or maybe not, Anglo workers like the Irish resented them, not because of the language, but, and there's always a but, because they got outworked. The Chinese workers kept at it all day, pausing only to drink cups of tea. This made up for their taking smaller shovelfuls of dirt and putting less into the wheelbarrows. They put in 80 hour weeks and then smoked opium Saturday night and all day Sunday. They got it by contract from the company store. Can you guess what happened next? A New York newspaper printed a letter that accused the Panama Railroad of trafficking in illegal drugs. They were spending 15 cents a day for each man's opium. The company responded by shutting off the supply with no warning. What happened in Panama a couple of weeks later was horrible. Panicked workers woke a sick George Totten. He was the top guy in Panama and was recovering from yellow fever. He found that almost all of the Chinese were trying to leave this world without waiting for God's call. Some 425 had already succeeded. Their dead bodies littered the ground, were in the water, and even hung from the trees. What these men did, either to themselves or had others do to them, is stomach churning. I'll mention just one thing. Some men put stones in their pockets and sat in the ocean and waited for the tide. Ah, can you imagine? Cotton issued orders to help the Chinese by force if necessary. He had them transported to Caribbean islands where he'd hoped that they could find opium. History doesn't record what happened to them. But today, on those islands, it seems there are many who have oriental features. A practical lesson is not that drugs are bad and that withdrawal is worse. The Chinese came from a culture in which the use of opium was acceptable. Even their temples had racks of pipes and the tools to clean them. 
The opium helped them deal with the misery of their lives, separation from their families, the constant fear of disease, the continual drudgery of their labors. But, and here is the last but, they may have become addicted with predictable consequences. Do you want me to rail against the use of drugs now? Hmm? I'd like to, but I won't. Your life is not as miserable as those coolies, but you certainly have challenges. Everybody does. Find a positive way to cope. Be aware of the balance of body, mind, and spirit. Replenish what's been depleted. Are you exhausted? Rest. Are you sitting too much? Go take a walk. Are you bored? Read a book, explore, meet someone new, but be aware that they can influence you for both good and evil. And now a shout out to Bob. He suggested a much more positive lesson than we'd originally planned. Alas, by the way, there's a plague outside. It's called the opioid crisis. It will kill more Americans this year than died in the Korean War, in Vietnam, or by car accidents. You would think that this slaughter would be front page news every day, but it's not. You hear about Russia, about impeachment, the election. <laughs> what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Tell us, please. I am Mike for the Be More Better team. I'd like to thank you for watching. We really appreciate it. Please comment, like, follow, all the rest. Subscribe if you haven't, but always, always be more better. Body, mind, and spirit. And then be even more better when you make your best friend aware of a real crisis. This one has been difficult for me because it's personal. <laughs> Until the next 100. Bye now.